How's it going guys? My name is Case and I'm usually just the lowly intern here at TFL, but today I'm bringing you a review of my 2014 Mazda 3. Let's get right into it. First things first, let's talk about what initially drew me to the car, which is the styling. And especially in this bright soul red, it's a great looking car. Now, some of you would be excused for thinking that this little body kit on it is not from the factory, but that was actually an optional appearance package. Same with the wheels. These are all Mazda parts and they were available when I bought the car. So that added this little lip spoiler here, these little skirts on the side, a diffuser at the back, and a wing up top. So besides the fun contrast with the red and black, I've always liked the lines of this car. It's got some nice sharp edges, and I'm a big fan of the proportions of the hatchback. Under the hood, we've got a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It's a good motor, it revs happily, but it doesn't make a ton of power. It's about 180, 185 horsepower, around about the same in torque. That's not a whole lot, but for a car this size, it's honestly plenty. I've got this car set up with a six speed automatic. To be fair, when I bought it, the 2.5 liter was only available with the automatic. I would have picked the manual if I could have, and looking back, I really, really wish I had it. But at the same time, I still really enjoy driving this car, especially because it handles well. Now I've done a couple modifications. Obviously the first one you see is my Plasti Dip mural on the engine cover here. But more functionally, I put this cold air intake on and also a catback exhaust. Kind of the basic mods that anyone's gonna do to their everyday driving car. So I've really enjoyed these tires. I've got Continental Extreme Contacts on here. They do great on the road. I've actually lowered the car about an inch and put a stiffer sway bar on it. But as you can see, even though I've modified it with that to make it better on the street, it still managed to get here through this snow. But if you look behind us here, there's a couple people struggling with the same thing. So glad I have some good tires. There was a period of time that you couldn't have convinced me that I was gonna have fun driving a front wheel drive automatic hatchback. And I understand that. I'm a driving purist as much as any guy. But I've learned to really, really love the way that this thing cruises. The steering has a nice feel to it. It's a little bit on the light side, so it doesn't have as much feedback as an actual performance car but it still tells you everything that you need to know about what this car is doing. It also handles surprisingly well. There's a little bit of body roll, again, as compared to an actual performance car, but it still gets around turns plenty well, especially, again, with the extreme contacts. They make a huge difference. So like I said, I definitely prefer the hatchback to the sedan. I know there's a lot of sedan diehards out there, but this just gives you way more space. Now it comes with this little cargo divider so people can't see into your trunk. And if you yank that out, see you get a whole lot more height. And then if you want, you can even throw the seats forward. And they don't fold completely flat, but it does give you a good amount of space. I've used this car to move from apartment to apartment, driven all of my stuff cross country, and it really does do a good job of carrying everything that you need to bring with you. So a hatchback lets you have all that extra space, but you don't have to sacrifice the driving fun like you would with a crossover. So stepping inside of the Mazda here, you can see it's a pretty nice interior. I like a lot of the metal trim. That helps make it feel more premium. Along those same lines, you get red stitching and you get this nice piano black trim. It gets a little dirty, but it still looks good, I would say. From the driver's seat, you get an actual manual physical parking brake. That goes a long way in my book. You also get this scroll wheel right here, which lets you control the Apple CarPlay. 
That's up top here, and granted, the screen that it's on doesn't look very nice. It's got a big bezel, and it's kind of plasticky looking. It's not the nice, shiny touch screens that we're used to now, but it gets the job done. You've also got heated seats, a nice heads-up display here. Most modern heads-up displays show your graphic on the windshield itself. This one projects it onto a little screen, but that's never bothered me. It works just fine. You've also got a nice big tack here in the center and some pretty nice Bose audio speakers. The sound system in this car sounds good. So all of that put together is a big part of the reason why I picked this car over some of its competitors, but it's not perfect in here. Let's go into the back seat and see where this car might fall short. So climbing in back here, you can see that legroom is pretty limited. I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11, so I'm not a very tall guy. And you can see if I get comfortable, my knees touch the back seat. It works for short trips as long as you're not a massive human, but it's definitely not ideal. And at the same time, we also don't get any climate vents back here. So if it's a hot day and you're not up front, you might suffer. Knew these cars were around about $30,000 if you spec them out the way that this one is, but on the used market, you can pick these things up for around about 15 grand, which is making it a pretty good deal. It is a little loud in the cabin of this car. Uh, the noise insulation is not as good as it could be, which you can probably hear. So all in all, I would call this car a pretty good complete package. It does everything that you need a car to do, and it's not going to be necessarily the most exciting thing that you get to drive. For me, this is my daily. This is the car that gets me places that I absolutely have to go. And that's good when you have a lot of project vehicles that tend to fail you more often than not. Those are not the types of things that you can depend on every single day to get you places when you have to go to work, when you have to go to school, or you have to drive across the country. And I've never had a single problem with this car. Sure, it's a little low to the ground, it's not going to be great off-road, but at the same time, you rarely find yourself needing to do that. At least I don't. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. I've had a lot of fun walking you through my Mazda 3. I've put about 40,000 miles on it, and it's still a great car but let me know what you would do differently to it in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real-world daily driver reviews.